Today is the, the 25th of February, 2011, and yesterday was Thursday, the 24th. And the chart I put up on the blog is what was, it was yesterday, an intraday chart of silver priced in dollars and gold. Really, this is nothing more, this chart here, then the opposite of the gold to silver ratio, which is the silver to gold ratio. And it's one ounce of silver to 710 milligrams or 709 milligrams of the gold. So this one in here would be the silver to dollar ratio. I wonder which chart is going to last the long run. Moving on to the 15 minute time frame and it's been quite volatile to say the least. The market uh, it's up towards this uh, manipulated five day moving average and it's manipulated because I added these numbers in manually from uh, another source that were not New York time hours but it really is to my advantage so that I can see what uh, really happened and well I could have manipulated it better by having a uh, high of 34.33 that's the actual high the low was actually 31.70 so you can see they don't match up too well but within that though we uh, are definitely in a, uh, a, a downtrend triangle this is uh, one of the better ways of drawing it in I'm sure you can make a better line obviously if you Maybe, I don't know. Either way, we're in a downtrend over the short term. But, of course, uh, we came up, we found support at this 10-day uh, moving average. Whenever you have a spot where you dip below a 5, uh, you find a, uh, a move where it goes down there but doesn't stay and breaks above. That's your classic bear trap, which would most likely mean a move up towards the uh, 34 level at least as a uh, test. And uh, as far as downside targets, well, we'll go through all the numbers right now on a uh, a calculator that I made, a Fibonacci, a Fibonacci calculator, and the the uh, using old school uh, Commodore 64 really programming. This is how I would have had to uh, come up with the data if I was using the basic programming. As for the highest point, the lowest point, the current current price, put in this formula here for the rate of increase of the trend line. And uh, then move this in uh, 10,000 different ranges. And this is where I come up with Fibonacci numbers. So that's exactly what I did on the spreadsheet uh, using the same type of uh, deal. This is the exact Fibonacci number, at least for this many decimals. 0.618033988749. I don't know the decimals after it, but I'm sure I could uh, find out. And I think I know one way. But anyway, that's off topic. Uh, we have uh, the uh, linear levels, the 38.2, the 61.8, the 50%. The upside targets, they are all calculated on there. I don't get the downside calculated on this one here, but I do on this uh, spreadsheet. So what we have is a low of 31.70 and a high of 34.33. The upside and downside targets are as follows. You have a 161.8 of 35.96. Break this range, that's where you're going to. You break below, you're going to 3027. That's the uh, downside level you'll be going to. That would be support 30 and a quarter. But as far as the significant levels are concerned, this tells us what we've retraced 51.4%, 47%. That's how much we have left to go to get to this high of 3433. So we've retraced 48. 3299 would be a 50% retracement. So therefore, the key numbers are 30 cents and 68 cents. Therefore, if we uh, looked at the uh, yeah, 60, 32, 68, 33, 30. So therefore, uh, 32, 68 would be just somewhere around here. 33, 30, somewhere in the area of here. Okay, so that means if... Uh, we get to this little point of 3360. You'd, li you'd think you would see some resistance. You'd like it to come back down, maybe to 33, 33 and a quarter, and then find a way to take it out. If it does go above, break above it, you have to really give buyers control, 
And if it manages to uh, come back, find support, or even continue its gains, then your next likely thought would be a move up to 34.33. Okay, the next chart we're going to take a look at will be the daily chart. And within this, we can pretty much see the same type of uh, downward trend on the uh, these candles. There's now been uh, four candle consolidation since it's made its high. A four candle consolidation, starting with the first red candle, the green one, the red one, the green one. And uh, thus, it's correcting this uh, decent sized rally. The bottom of this rally is $26.30. So we'll put that number in the Fibonacci calculator. We'll put in 26.30 and we'll get the uh, numbers. So thus far, we have retraced 15.39% of the rally. That's not that much of a retracement. The significant that number is both linear and Fibonacci. 3101 on a, a linear or on a uh, logarithmic point of view would be 3101. On a linear point of view, it would be 31 and a quarter, which matches uh, fairly well with the uh, 3140 level, which is really 3142 exact on the 48, but. Uh, either way, it is, it's all about being close to the levels, and that's what this 31 happens to be. Because we're at 32.95, we can see just by using this type of cycle that the next level of resistance within these numbers is 33.02, and the next uh, level of uh, support is 32.24. And uh, that means this is the uh, big hold. If it stays above 31, that the market remains bullish on the intermediate term time frame. A uh, breakout of this range means that we're going to 39.29. If uh, the range fails, then it, the downside target is uh, 23 towards the downside. Going back to that same chart again, if we take a look at the uh, most recent low and high from this one in here, to this one. Now I've already clarified within this channel that the 61.8% level is here. You're going to see that it's going to work out to 29.38 when it was this high to this low. And it, it had a nice confirmation break, confirmation series in here. This is where it was confirming it really well that the move would be going up to its previous high and it surpassed it to the downside. So the top at this point was 31.28. If we put in 31.28 on this in here, this uh, this what I say this is a 29.38 uh, Fibonacci which it cleared uh, through. The 161.8 was a hit by three cents. It was supposed to go to 34.36, making its next target 39. 34. So that was a very successful uh, hit amongst that point. The uh, next chart is uh, the same chart. And uh, you know what? No, I'm going to do the weekly chart because I want to explain the uh, Fibonacci's a little bit better on the uh, 4.8. Because I've talked about the Fibonacci from these two lows. Maybe they're not the best lows, but they're the lows that I'm choosing. And that is the uh, lows of around 4. Uh, which would be probably roughly around there, and the highs of 8, which uh, would be roughly around there. Therefore, the lows were tested on many occasions, the top uh, very decently. And when we use that level for the upside Fibonacci, we get the 4 and we get the 8. So the, the 1047, 1447, 2094, 3142, 4836. Back last year, I was stating as it was getting up to this 3140 level that I was expecting it would pull back rather than break through that level. Now it pulled back to 26, that was a hit. And the reason why it was standing it was because of Fibonacci. Therefore, I felt it was a better play to buy on the dip than it was to confirm 
a breakout above the 685.4. So what do we need to confirm a breakout above this level? Well, we need to, uh, I guess we'll move this back to the daily chart, but we basically need to uh, confirm that uh, we're breaking through this level. Oftentimes that can mean something as basic as just coming back down to support, finding a, a level like in here and then just bursting through it. Something in the area of like that to confirm it. Another way of confirming it is if it goes up to 36, 37, 38, 39 type thing, at some point you just have to say, wait a second, enough's enough. This is a confirmation breakout, if you will. So I, I would rather it come back down to support, test key resistance areas, because it makes it easier for me to find confirmation, but there is no confirmation yet of a break above this 3140 level. However, there is confirmation going to 50. So you can use the analysis, well, maybe because of that, I like the chances it will go higher. And I say that because if we go back to that quarterly chart, and instead of using this as a top, use its high as the top, which is roughly at around $50 an ounce from 1980. So what we'll do is we'll put in 50 along the way. Therefore, we have only 16.5% exponentially, logarithmically, if you will, left to go on this retracement. We have retraced 84, 83, excuse me, 83.5%. So we are in a very uh, beautiful state for upwards movement. The big level of support. Uh, that we wanted to test was this 1905. This was the big 38.2% Fibonacci, the one that it had to hold to, and stay or, and remain lower for the bears to be in control. They're not in control, obviously. So the question is, can we say we have a confirmation break above $19.05? Let's note the next Fibonacci was 27.5, and, and then 34. 58 and which was actually a hit because the 2753 level which you can see uh, I don't have the weekly chart quite on me now but the key one is the 19 as I'm saying that is roughly up around here we can see originally it came up to at resistance like it's supposed to be has a, a correction through price finds resistance breakout there's a solid breakout. There's one of those confirmations. Because as I was stating, looking for confirming 3140, what you like is to come back to support. But at some point, if it just keeps on going higher, you have to use some sort of method stating, okay, wait a second, this uh, is starting to look legit. And the break above 29 and a close, uh, especially a green candle close on this quarter with them only a month ago, would be what I'd be looking for a very solid confirmation but it's it's extremely uh, bullish based on that point of view and then you throw in what's going on with the uh, the, the crises with the comex if you will the backwardation these are big money in the comex contracts that want their physical silver it's it's the same as a bank run. They can't just uh, if people want money and banks run out. If they could if they could easily print it and put it on a piece of paper, they give it to you, and that's what they're doing. But they just can't go out and mine silver and give it to them. I mean, they're mining as much as they can right now, and therefore a lot of times when you see the big moves lower, like in here, you state, okay, well, fundamental state it can't go much lower. I'm buying, even though the technical state's looking state is looking like it might want to break down lower. Uh-uh. Same thing if you start to see it going back here. Does the fundamental still change? Does as do we have much more silver in this world? If we do, then okay, maybe give benefit of the doubt to the downside. Or is there a situation where we don't use it anywhere near like we used to? If that's the case, give benefit to the downside. Is this information about dollars being fiat and debt being guaranteed and the economy actually being bad news, false. If that's the case, give benefit to the downside. But there's nothing to state that now. And uh, that's why if I notice we have any breakdowns, then it, they do become buying opportunities. It's just hard to buy right now. We're going from shortages to outages. And we've had decent sized moves last year, or not last year, uh, last three decades ago, 1980. And these were some wild times that caused it, but I got 
I gotta think that a Comex busting and going default is also wild news. Thank you for watching this video, and the blog will be updated today at 4.30. Again, if you want a copy of this spreadsheet, uh, send me an email at endlessmountain2008 in numbers at yahoo.ca. Thank you.